After reliving a very traumatic experience in the previous video, we're going back to some Fuyuhiko dang romp comedy because Fuyuhiko doesn't traumatize me. Fuyuhiko just makes me laugh and question what I'm doing with my life, which is why I'm on YouTube. Let's get started. Yeah, I'm not a good guy. I am not. I, I wish I was a good guy. I like the idea of being a good guy. Sometimes I have an opportunity to be a good guy, but then I don't necessarily do it. I was on a plane once, and I was flying first class, because I had a thing. I, I fly first class, who cares? Just, that's the way it is. I don't, I'm not like you. I'm not, I'm not. All the things you do, I do a better version of all those things. And <laughs> it's only for another year at the most, believe me. It's not gonna last. It's been about eight months, I got a year left, and then I'm back to being just like you. But for now, I, yeah, it's pretty good. So, I'm in a first class uh, seat, and first class is so crazily better. It's so much better. You get a bigger seat, you get food, but also you get to sit, and first, you get to sit before anybody else does. They sit you down, and you get to just sit there with champagne, and watch all the sweaty, just <laughs> miserable, all the single moms hefting their stroller and the kid. And you're like, oh, that looks heavy and nobody's helping you. That's a drag. And you, just, and you get to just. Anyway, so I was on a plane, I'm first, first class, and a soldier gets on a plane. I see soldiers fly all the time because that's how they get to the war. If they fly on a shitty airline, you think they get to go on a cool green plane with a red light and go, go, go! No, they just go to Delta and they just <laughs> wait in line to go to a war. And they always fly coach. I've never seen a soldier in first class in my life. It could be a full bird colonel. He's between two fat guys in coach. And they're always nice. I've never seen a soldier get on a plane like, hey, I'm in the army, fuck you, I have a gun. They're always like, oh, yes, sir, thank, yes, thank you very much, ma'am. It's like having an extra flight attendant. They help everybody put their shit up. <laughs> They're awesome. And every time that I see a soldier on a plane, I always think, you know what, I should give him my seat. It's, it, it would be the right thing to do. It would be easy to do, and it would mean a lot to him. I could, give him, I could go up to him, hey, son, I get to call him son. Hey, son, go ahead and take my seat. Because I'm in first class, why? For being a professional asshole. <laughs> I'm in first class because I talk about babies with big dicks. That's what got me my seat. This guy is giving his life for the country, he thinks, and so he, he has to sit. But that's good enough, that's good enough. The fact that he thinks it. I'm serious. That he's fucking told by everybody in his life system that that's a great thing to do, and he's doing it. And it's scary, but he's doing it, and he's sitting in this shitty seat, and I should trade with him. I never have. Let me make that clear. I've never done it once. I've had so many opportunities. I never even really seriously came close. <laughs> and here's the worst part. I still just enjoyed the fantasy <laughs> for myself to enjoy. I was actually proud of myself for having thought of it. I was proud. Oh, I am such a sweet man. That is so nice of me to think of doing that and then totally never do it. That's what we call mental black bullet a bridge. Dang robber happy fun dub loopers. Mukuro Kasaba sings make a move. My hero Akka, I've never once watched that. I'm an asshole. What does it take for me to become a professional asshole? What's the difference between an asshole and a professional asshole? I'd like to be a professional asshole. I'd like to get paid for my being an asshole. That'd be great. I stopped. I fed pigeons. That's some happy shit. You gotta be happy to feed pigeons. Here's the beautiful thing about me feeding pigeons. When I was done feeding the pigeons, I didn't have to lie about it. See, when you marry, you lie about shit like that. Because you don't believe, that's your wife would ever believe, that you were doing something as dumb as feeding some goddamn pigeons. 
There's not a married man in this audience right now that can go out and feed pigeons. And his wife call and she say, babe, where you at? And you go out feeding pigeons. And she believed that she was feeding some fucking pigeons. It'll never happen. It's an argument off the bat. Where you at, babe? I'm out here feeding pigeons. You ain't feeding no damn pigeons. What are you talking about? I ain't feeding the pigeons. Then put the pigeon on the fucking phone. What? Let <laughs> me talk to the goddamn pigeons. No pigeon, tell a bitch sitting next to you that's making pigeon noise in the phone when I see her, I beat her ass. See, this is where I'm gonna be a party pooper and hopefully an asshole. Why don't you just take a photo of the pigeon? Or better yet, why don't you just switch the call to a video call? You know why? Because you weren't feeding a pigeon. You're feeding something else to. Oh god. <laughs> Okay, I didn't think of it that way. Because you feed pigeons bread, right? And the bread's white. And I didn't think of it that way. So when you're feeding white stuff to someone... You know what? Forget about it. Feeling uncomfortable now. Can't even drink this. Now I feel physically sick. <sighs> hey. Hey, do your robots have to... And there we go. There we go. No, they don't. They have a USB port. Hey. That smile and hair reminds me of something. She's like Oscar, but with less reddish hair. <laughs> 